Welcome to the EZU course on some of the basics of Retention Center. In this course, you will learn about navigation and capabilities in the EZLINKS Retention Center product. So, let's get started. To navigate there, hover over the Retention Center icon and click on Overview. The Retention Center Overview page houses three tabs with a different list on each. The first tab is Renewal List, which looks at renewals coming in and reviews the change amount. If the change is high, you'll want to investigate why it's increased and if you can remarket those policies to obtain a more competitive price. Let's review each column and what they mean. The first column is Insured Name, which is the customer's account name in Easy Links. If you see a trophy icon to the left of the customer's name, this indicates they're a VIP customer. The second column is Renewals. You may notice a number in parentheses here. This number indicates that the customer has policy renewals within this number of days. The number of days can be adjusted in the retention center settings should you want to change them. The options are 30, 60, or 90 days from the renewal date. You'll also notice a couple more things in this column. For example, the one of three denotes that there's one renewal on the list out of the customer's total three active policies. Below that, the system will tell you how many manual policies the customer has in Easy Links, if applicable. These will be indicated in yellow, as well as pending policies. If an active, expiring policy has already received a renewal offer for the next term from the carrier, these will be indicated in green. If a policy passes through retention center without an agent or producer closing them out prior to expiration, these will be indicated in red. If a policy has passed through retention center and was closed out, but still falls in the renewal range of a policy with a renewal offer, these will be indicated in gray. The third column is renewal date, which indicates the renewal date of the policy listed. The fourth column is total change percent, which shows the percentage the premium has increased or decreased. When this number is in parenthesis, it means there was a decrease in the premium. You can change the threshold for premium change percent and premium change dollar in retention center settings. The fifth column is risk, which can either be low or high. Low will always be in green, whereas high will always be in red. Risk is tied to the total change percent. For example, say our premium change percent is set to 10%. If the increase between the original premium and renewal premium exceeds 10%, the system will mark this as high risk. Ultimately, this alerts you that it may be a better idea to remarket to your customer to obtain a more competitive price. If the increase in premium falls below 10%, it'll be considered low risk, meaning that it's an acceptable change and likely doesn't need remarketing. The sixth column is quoted. When a green check mark appears in this column, it means the customer has been quoted within the last 30 days. The seventh column is status. In the drop down, you can select a status for the policy renewal. Your choices here are status with note, account review, closed, pending, and remarket. One of the best options here is status with note because you can select a status and attach a note to it. For example, this option can be extremely helpful if you have a pending renewal because you can select the status and then leave a note for documentation purposes. The note will then appear in the customer's account under the activity tab. The eighth column is days, which indicates the number of days the policy has been on the renewal list. The last column is renewal manager, which is the agent or producer who's in charge of the policy's renewal. This is typically the agent or producer who the policy is assigned to, but this isn't always the case. To change the renewal manager, simply click on the drop-down and select the desired person from the list. Now, let's discuss the expanded view of a customer's renewal on the list. Click anywhere in the white space on a single listing to open the expanded view. Once it opens, you'll notice two icons in the top right-hand corner. The envelope icon will open an email which can be directly sent to the customer you're viewing. Likewise, the text icon to the right of the envelope will allow you to send a text message to the customer. Below those icons, you'll see highlighted text that reads, Difference Report. You can click here to get a detailed breakdown of the differences between the latest endorsed policy and the renewal. Version 1 is the policy renewal, while version 2 is the latest endorsed policy. Any details in red mean they're present in the latest endorsed policy, but not in the renewal. 
Any details in green mean they're present in the renewal, but not the latest endorsed policy. Lastly, any details highlighted in yellow mean they've changed from the latest endorsed policy to the renewal. In the expanded view, you'll find more details on the renewal and latest endorsed policy. These include both the percentage and dollar amount by which the premium has changed, as well as the change reasons. The change reasons will be listed on the bottom right side in gray. Now, scroll down to the bottom of the expanded view. Here, you'll find four tabs, Activity, System Log, Retention Activity, and Retention System Log. The Activity tab will show all activity in that customer's account, whereas the Retention Activity will only show Retention Center activity for the customer. Likewise, the System Log will show all system activity for the customer, while Retention System Log will only show system activity related to Retention Center. Next, we'll discuss the second tab, which is the Expiration List. This is a list of policies that you have not received a renewal for yet. Manual policies will likely fall under this list until a pending renewal is entered into the system. Once a pending renewal is entered into the system, the policy will be moved to the renewal list. Some of the columns you see here will be the same as those on the renewal list. For example, the insured name will always appear on each of the three lists. However, you may notice an icon to the left of the insured's name that we haven't yet seen. The envelope with a red circle on it indicates that there's no email address on file for the customer. If you plan on utilizing email campaigns in Retention Center or Automation Center, this is something you'll want to fix as soon as possible. Now, let's review the columns on the expiration list that we haven't yet seen. The second column which is expiring PL 45 days slash CL 45 days indicates policies that are expiring within 45 days. The PL stands for personal lines, while the CL stands for commercial lines. Once again, you can manage the number of days for each in the retention center settings. Your options for the number of days are 30, 45, 60, 75, and 90. The third column is earliest expiration. If there are multiple policies expiring within the same customer account, the earliest expiration date will be listed in this column. In this example, you can see this customer has three policies expiring out of three total policies in the system. One policy expires on the 31st of May, while the other policies expire in June. Thus, the 31st is listed as the earliest expiration date. If a policy on this list isn't renewed by its earliest expiration date, it will move to the expired list. The fourth and final column we'll discuss here is the days to expiration. This is exactly what it sounds like, the number of days until the policy expires. The third and final list is the expired list, which are all policies that have already expired. There are only two columns here that are a bit different from the other lists. The second column, expired, indicates the number of policies the customer has that are expired. The fourth column, days to expiration, is similar to that on the expiration list. The only difference here is that the number will be negative and highlighted red because the expiration has come and gone. For example, the policy here is six days past expiration. To learn more about retention center settings, watch the retention center setup and settings video. To learn more about Retention Center Actions and Automation Center for Retention Center, watch the Automation Workflows for Retention Center and Retention Center Actions videos. That's all for this EZU course on some of the basics of Retention Center. You should now have the knowledge to navigate and utilize Retention Center in EZ Links. Thanks for watching.